guys, my Airsoft here, and today we're taking a look at the pretty much brand new Classic Army ISSC MK22. This video is going to be a little bit laid back as I'm pretty sick right now, but without further ado, let's jump right into the review. If you'd like to see exactly what comes in the box with this gun, be sure to check out my video of the unboxing of this gun called What's in the Case, or click the first link in the description of this video, and it will take you there. The ISSC MK22 is a 22 caliber version of the FN Scar L, which is why this looks so similar to that gun. This, of course, is the aerosol version, and Classic Army got the licensing to make it, so this gun is fully licensed, which is pretty awesome. The ISSC MK22 by Classic Army is part of Classic Army's new skirmish line of guns, which replaced our old Sportline line of guns. Sportline line. That is really annoying to say. Sportline line. Sportline line. Whatever. Anyway, it's part of the new Sportline line of guns, and the main differences are is they no longer use ABS plastic for their externals. They are now using P30, which is a high-density non-fiber polymer, which keeps it lightweight and durable. Talk more about that later. And they completely overhaul the internals and the wiring. Like, there's a lot going on in this gun. So like I literally just mentioned about 15 seconds ago, this gun is primarily composed of P30, which is a high-density non-fiber polymer, keeps it lightweight but durable. But in my opinion, the pistol grip, stock, and lower receiver feel nice, but the upper receiver feels a little bit dingy. I'm a little bit worried about that. I think it might crack if you dropped it, so be careful with it, I guess. I don't know. Don't drop your guns anyway, but you get what I'm saying. It is metal where it counts, however, so that's definitely a plus. Starting from the front of the gun, you have your orange flash outer, which would be right here, which is not pictured right now because I already removed it, which covers your 14mm negative or counterclockwise threading, which fits most aftermarket suppressors and flash outers. Then moving back, you have one, two, and three metal rails, which is pretty cool, and you have a full length upper polymer rail. The first ambidextrous feature we're going to talk about in this gun is a charging handle, which is used to access your hop up, and it can be swapped to either side of the gun. You simply pull it back and your hop-up unit is right there. Next you have your mag release which is also ambidextrous. And finally you have your fire selector which of course is ambidextrous as well. So this gun is really lefty friendly. Next up we have included front and rear iron sights which are adjustable for inch and elevation and lock firmly into place. So that is a definite plus. And moving further back you have your folding stock which also locks into place on the other side. Let me show that to you guys. Locks into place, has an adjustable cheek rest with two points of adjustment, and the stock also retracts the three points. It's just not screwed in right now, that's why it came out like that, but yeah. Since we ended off with the stock, we might as well talk about the battery compartment now. To access your battery compartment, you simply fold the stock like so, lock it into place, use the included Allen key, insert it right here, unscrew it, take out the screw, be sure not to lose it, fold the stock again, and pull the stock out. This is your battery space. It is really, really small in this gun, which is a huge negative to me because now I have to go finding batteries that will actually fit in this gun. Before we move on to the internals, let me just demonstrate one of my favorite features on this gun. I have an 11 lipo plugged in. Now, usually with an 11 one lipo, even like the $400 guns I buy, $400 plus guns I buy, the trigger response is always okay, but not like really good. And since I'm a semi only player, I need to be really good. However, in this gun, 11 one lipo, completely stock gun. <laughs> has no trouble keeping up with my finger no matter how fast I shoot, which is freaking incredible to me. Good job, Classic Army. So for the tech specs, I decided to put it up on a screen and read it out loud to you guys as well. So you guys have both options, so whichever one works for you, you'll have both options, like I just said. It comes with an inline MOSFET, which I found to get pretty hot in semi-auto, which kind of sucks, but on full auto it was fine, which is weird, but that's what happened. You have wire cut steel gears, a quick change spring system, a reinforced gearbox shell, nine millimeter bushings, a 6.03 Tabor barrel, which is awesome for them to include all that so far. And the 6.03 Tabor barrel definitely shows an accuracy. I was testing it a lot and this gun is freaking accurate out of the box, especially for such a low FPS. 330 to 340, by the way, that's the FPS. And the gun comes stock wired to Dean's, which every airsoft company should be doing now. And if for some other reason you're not using Dean's batteries, don't worry because it comes with an adapter in the box to small to me up. I've been noticing in a lot of my older reviews, people have been asking like, hey, I just got that gun, what max speed in it? I can't find a mag that feeds in it. So let me go ahead and throw that into a review and hopefully it'll help you guys out. So far I only tested three mags with this gun, but they all fed flawlessly. So I'm assuming this is not gonna be a picky gun with mags, I'm hoping, because three for three is pretty good. We have for one, our Lonex flash mag feeds flawlessly. 
Another flaw speeder is the PTS EPM magazine, which is relatively new and a little bit pricey. It's a mid cap, by the way, in case you're wondering. And finally, the included high capacity magazine that comes with the gun that falls as well. Three more things I'm going to mention before we move on to the pros and the cons are one, you have 18 to 1 ratio gears, which allows for a faster rate of fire while still being solid, so that's pretty cool. It retails for approximately $185, maybe a little bit less in some sites, maybe a little bit more at other sites, which is an incredible price for such an upgraded package. Well, stock package, but it's stockly upgraded, so that's awesome. And finally, you have 330 to 340 FPS, like I mentioned earlier, I coronated it quite a few times and I got consistent readings between those two numbers. So it's meant for CQB, however, the range and accuracy. I can't believe I did that whistle, it's pretty good. I suck at whistling. Whatever, it allows for field use because I was really, really impressed with this range and accuracy. I guess that type of barrel really did help. Now it's time for the pros and the cons of the gun, or what I think are the pros and the cons of the gun. And there are many, many pros I found to be relevant and many. Not many, only a few cons. So we're gonna start off with the cons, get them out of the way, and move on to the pros of the gun. The cons number con number one is the P30. It feels pretty solid all over. That's the nullifier revolver, by the way. Except for the upper receiver, I'd be pretty worried about that cracking, honestly. But just don't drop your gun. It's not that complicated not to. I mean, maybe it is. I don't know. Just try not to drop your gun. Number two is the MOSFET got pretty hot in semi-auto, which is kind of weird that it didn't get hot in full auto, but. Whatever, it didn't blow up, so that's a good thing. And finally, for the cons, the battery space is really small. It doesn't fit any of my batteries, and I have quite a few, which sucks, but it's not the biggest deal because you get a new LiPo at any hobby shop for like $12, $13, so it's not a deal breaker at all. I honestly found so many pros with this gun, I don't even know where to start. For starters, it takes on four mags. That's a huge one for me. You don't have to go buy a whole bunch of new mags, and you could always use your friend's mag on the field if you run out. It comes with this in the box, which isn't so useful towards all more advanced air softer, but if you're a beginner air softer, it comes with a ton in the box for you guys like to get started on the field and play. Another pro for lefty players would be it's fully ambidextrous, which is freaking awesome. It's fully licensed. So you guys know I complained about the upper receiver before about it being feeling a little bit dingy, but everything else feels really, really solid, so that's a definite pro for everything else. Like the metal parts and the polymer parts, they all feel really nice. It's fully ambidextrous, which is great for lefty players. The performance is incredible for a $180 gun. That's another pro, it's cheap. 180 bucks. You get a lot in the box and you get a incredibly performing gun. Incredibly well performing gun. I don't, wow, my English is off today. If you're looking at amazing trigger response and a great rate of fire, this gun does not need a new motor anytime soon, at least not for me. So basically overall I would say Classic Army did an incredible job with this gun. They really, really stepped up their game, so thumbs up to you guys for that. I would recommend this gun to beginner gear software for sure because if you're looking for a new CQB slash field platform, you want to use it for both, you want to use it for one, either way. This gun comes with a lot in the box that you started, and it's a great gun. It'll outperform a lot of the other guns in the field. Even towards an advanced air softer, I don't want to name any guns, but this gun outperforms. Like, I have an AG that I put like 400 bucks into, and it's a $400 gun, and this shoots nicer, which kind of sucks because I put a ton of money into that one. But yeah, good job, Classic Army, once again. So, you guys wanted my opinion on this gun, and you got it. I have no idea how Classic Army pulled it off, this whole package for just $180, but they did, so. I would definitely take advantage of this steel and go pick one up for yourself. I see no reason why this shouldn't appear next to yourself on purchase because I can't say enough times. It's, it's, it's really good. It's really worth it. Anyway, thanks to Classic Army for sending this over for me to review. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope everybody enjoyed the video. And I think that's it. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you'd like to see next in the comments below. And bye.